church today. Are you as excited as I am for a great day in the presence of the Most High? This is Overcomers Christian Center, and where with the people in here, we overcome. It is a beautiful day out there today. It is Father's Day, and we give kudos to all the fathers in the house for all the great work that you've been doing over the family, being supportive, being prayerful, you know, being a shepherd over everyone in your home. We want to give kudos to you for such a day as this. The book of John, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, Behold, what manner of love that God has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Are you a son of God today? The scripture even says that he will our father, that we be an earthly father, we don't have to give good things to our children. How much more will God give good things to those who ask him? Are you going to ask of the Lord good things today? That the Lord might bless you, that the Lord might keep you, that the Lord might empower you to do and to fulfill the purpose for which he's brought you forth to this world. It is my prayer today as we fellowship with God. That, you will visit, that the Lord will visit you, that the Lord will touch you, that the Lord will, will meet your need at the very point for which you might be today. It is my desire that I fellowship with God in his presence this morning will, will, will be able to envelop you with his glory and enlarge your limits so that you might minister and, and, be, and be powerful in the life that God has called you to be. And I pray that the light of God will shine through you to your neighbors, to your co-workers, to your people, and the people in your community, that we might represent God even upon the surface of the earth. I want you to just take a moment and just ask God for his, for his blessings, for his presence this morning. As we come before him, let's just thank him, let's bless his name, let's exalt his name for today, let's, let's give him praise, let's give him glory, let's, let's just feed our members even unto God this morning. Let's say, Father, we thank you. We exhort you. We lift you high up. We give you praise. We, we lift you high up, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for such a day as this, O oh God. We thank you for you being our Father, O oh God. You can call us friends. We exhort your name for your innumerable benefits. We thank you for your goodness in our lives. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the mercies that you that you that advance with us on a daily basis. Lord, we say, be thou exalted, be thou glorified, O God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and just pray and commit today's service into sense. Let's ask that God himself will minister his word even unto you today, that you might be blessed of him, that you might be enriched by the word of his power, that the word of God might come unto you today, new in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask and we just receive your word. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will bless the vessel that you will use, that he or she might minister to us with the power and the authority that comes from you, that we might be blessed of your word even today, O oh God, that our life might be enriched and we might be changed forever in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up every vessel that you will use today in your hand. We ask for your anointing, even upon their heads, O oh God, that they might minister even like your oracle in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, even for every home that has been listening to him, even at this morning. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you will handle everyone there, O oh God, and that you will meet every need according to your Purpose according to, to your dictates in the name of Jesus. Lord, we rebuild the enemy over every home, oh God. We come against every power of the enemy that might be militating against this home, oh God. We ask for a stop and a break even of, of these problems in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, oh God, that your glory will permit every cranny of the homes, oh God, that your light might shine through every vessel into all these homes, oh God, into our community, into our nation, oh God. Lord, that we will just establish your counsel over this nation in the name of Jesus. Let your name be praised, O oh God. Let your name be glorified, O oh God, as we just revel in your presence, as we fellowship with you this morning. Let our lives, O oh God, not be the same in the name of Jesus. Let your name be praised forever, because we receive and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I pray that the Lord bless you today. As always, it will increase you from every area in the name of Jesus. We will invite our sister Copper to bless us as she ministers and lead us in praise and worship. Amen. Good morning, overcomers. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house. Thank you for everything that you guys have done in our lives, our children.
those lives and, and also the wise life. Okay, let me start. Blah, 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 blah. See, life is just so much better. <laughs> Good morning, Overcomers. Happy Father's Day. Thank you to all the fathers in the house. Thank you for everything that you guys have done. We are so blessed to have you and have you as the forefront, the, um, the head of the household. We also are so thankful to be in God's presence this morning because we have the ultimate Father. He's always there for us. He's always present. He's our present need at any time of desperation or anything like that. So if you have thanks in your heart for everything that he has done for us, go ahead and stand up, open up your hearts and receive what we have this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he has risen, oh Lord. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lord on high. I welcome you uh, especially to this day, this uh, Father's Day uh, service uh, at Overcomers Christian Center. We bless the name of the Lord for what God uh, is doing among our fathers. We give him praise. We give him all the glory and all the honor and adoration. And I want to thank God for that time of praise and worship. And I want to thank God for uh, the time of prayer by uh, Pastor, Pastor Bami. God bless you. Hallelujah. Today is Father's Day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we rejoice in this day because it is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Like Pastor Bami prayed, we celebrate the fatherhood of God. For God to be a father over us. He chose that. He said, I will be a father to you and you will be my children. He chose that. So we thank God and we, we celebrate the fatherhood of God. You know, his, his omnipotence, his kindness, his love towards us. So we thank God, you know, for being a father. Not just uh, not just as a God to us, but as a father. So we celebrate that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to celebrate all the men in the house. I want to celebrate you. You know, thank you so much for all that you do. We celebrate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, I know that the Lord has seen your labor of love over your wife, over your children, over your family. And I pray in the name of Jesus that in due time and all the time, you will enjoy your reward in Jesus' mighty Amen. name. Hallelujah. Amen. So happy Father's Day. We love you and we appreciate you on the on the behalf on behalf of all the women in the church. I want to say... Thank you to every father and to all the men in the house. 
God bless you. Amen. Amen. And uh, this month has been declared as a month uh, to bask in the Father's glory. And that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. I quickly want to read the passage of the scripture to us this morning. The story of the uh, prodigal son. I'm just going to go through it. All right. The story, you know, was that uh, or maybe is that there was a guy that took his inheritance and he spent it, he squandered it and all that. And he began to suffer. And eventually he came back to his senses and he said he was going to return home. He was going to return back to his father. And I'm going to take it from uh, verse 17. After he took the inheritance and he, you know, he spent it all and he began to suffer. And one day, like I said, he, he came back to his senses and he said, I am going to return to my father. From verse 17, the Bible says, And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. And we say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. <laughs> and he arose and came to his father. When he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Verse 21, And the son said unto, his, unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Verse 22, But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and mm -hmm. shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. <laughs> he was lost and is found, and they began to marry. You know, I chose this passage, you know, to... Uh, let us understand the uh, the nature of the father. You know, the nature of the father. The Bible says that when the father, even though he did a bad thing, even though he did something that is very, very wrong, but the Bible says when the father saw him as far up, said he had compassion. And that is the word that really touched me. He said, the Bible says that he had compassion on this child, even though he had been a bad child. But he still had compassion on him. And uh, even the child was saying, you know, well, I was trying to be humble. You know, I know... I have uh, violated my right as a son. I have, 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 you know, destroyed that or things like that. Say, so just make me a servant. And, and the father said, no, you are my son and you remain my son. Mm. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. I want to use this way to encourage all our fathers. I don't know, maybe there are some men you think you're not doing the right thing. You think uh, you, you're not, maybe you're not in the father's good book. I want mm. to let you know that just return to him. That's all you need to do. Just return to your father. And he's waiting. His arms are, are uh, you know, open mm -hmm. even to receive you because he's a, he's a compassionate father. Yes. He's a compassionate father. He's the father that never, you know, disowns or just toss you away, you know, as long as you return to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will embrace you and he will love you. You will never, you know, God had never seen anyone that, oh, the Bible says the gift and the callings of God, they are without repentance. And the meaning of a father is someone that has given back to a child. God, you know, he gave back to you. You are his son and you remain so forever in Jesus' name. Amen. So I just want to, you know, receive that for all men in the house, that you are forever in the father's love, Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray today that everything you need uh, to continue to be the father, the Lord will continue to supply you in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. You will not lose your position. Amen. Hallelujah. You will not lose that position uh, as the heir, you know, in the Father's kingdom, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So I welcome you with that. And happy Father's Day again amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Praise the name of Jesus. And before amen. I uh, move on today, I also want to celebrate our Father in the house, Pastor Sam Adeyemi. Um the father like we know is the father of fathers he has many god has blessed him with children physically and spiritually and we celebrate that you know a worthy father you know a, a, a responsible father a loving father you know i just want to celebrate our father in the house this morning and if you're there wherever you are in your living room you know, wherever you're in your kitchen wherever you are i want you to take this time and just appreciate pastor sam Adeyemi for me because the wonderful father 
to his children and to, to physically and spiritual children. And we pray that the grace will continue to multiply upon him in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We love him and we celebrate him today for God has given him as a small father to us in this church. The God is the ultimate father, but God has given him also as a father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we celebrate him and we pray that the grace of fatherhood, the, the, you know, that, that rest, the grace that rests on all fathers will continue to rest upon him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a privilege to share the same name with the Heavenly Father. We call him Father. And as a man, if you have been, if you have been addressed, addressed as a father, it's a privilege. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So Pastor amen. Sam, we celebrate you today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen and amen. And uh, if you're there, uh, we want to recite our uh, confession this morning. Amen. I'm going to give you a minute to get yourself ready and uh, to uh, say these words after me. Amen. Hallelujah. I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. I overcome by the blood of the Lamb the of the and by the word of my testimony. I am blessed. I am, blessed. I am happy. I am healthy. I am, I am a fruitful person. I am a loving person, lover of God and others. I am blessed spiritually, physically, financially, numerically, and socially. I am an overcomer. The glory and the presence of God is with me. I am a person of impact, making a difference in my community. Everywhere and anywhere I find myself, I am blessed and favored. The kingdom of God advances through me. I am a rich, wealthy, and a successful person. I am a wise and smart person. I am a person of vision and clear direction. I have the mind of Christ. My God is with me. He lives in me. He works in me, with me, and through me. I am an overcomer. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, I'm Father's Day one more time. As I welcome her Father and the Lord, Pastor Sam Adeyemi, to bring the word of life to us this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy, happy, happy Father's Day to everybody out there. Even to all our ladies, happy Father's Day to you. You know what? We celebrate you always because you have a great father in the King Eternal, the Ancient of Days, the faithful one of our lives. And especially happy Father's Day to all fathers out there, grandfathers, uh, young men, even boys that are growing up to become great fathers of tomorrow. Uh, we celebrate Father's grace upon your life today, and then we pray that God in His infinite mercy, you know, His love and His grace and His blessings of fatherhood uh, will continue to manifest unto you in Jesus' name. Well, we thank God for the time, that time of prayer and worship, and of course, the, uh, the welcome. And I want to say this, I appreciate the opportunity, you know, the privilege given unto me to be you know, a small father in the house, you know, an outlet of the faithfulness and the grace of our father at Overcomers. I'm saying to all Overcomers out there, I love you and I appreciate you and I thank you for the opportunity that you guys are giving to me to serve the father alongside with you. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you today. We bless you for your grace, your wisdom, for your word that comes to us, especially on this day, special day, that we celebrate your fatherhood and we tap into the wisdom of your fatherhood that we and all of us might be better human beings who may serve you as we expect of us and glorify you here on earth. So we receive open heavens. And Father, I position myself by your grace to be a conduit of your grace, your power, your wisdom, your intellect, your divine instruction to everyone listening right now, wherever they may be, in the name of Jesus and whatever time of life they may be, anywhere in the world, now or in the future, that this word shall be relevant unto them, 
blessing and perfecting your wisdom and grace in their lives and your counsel as well. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. You see, the word of the Lord this month is pretty clear. He says this is the month that we bask in the Father's uh, uh, glory. We bask in Father's goodness. You know, in other words, we relish in the goodness of God that surrounds us. We enjoy every bit of the blessings that God has given to us or is given to you and I or will give to us. You know, the seemingly significant and insignificant things around us. All right. Even many things we overlook. All right. I did say a uh, uh, couple of Sundays ago that you see you might still be having some areas in your life you're trying to deal with, maybe some addiction, some challenge in your life. But guess what? God in his infinite mercy had already perfected all for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So sometimes you need to shift your focus from the things that are yet to be and begin to count your blessings. Begin to relish in the goodness that he surrounds you with. You know, your relationship with the people in your household, in your community, wherever you find yourself. Even the butterfly that flies, you know, uh, cicada flies too. Anything, everything around you. Celebrate the goodness of God. The rain that falls, the sun that shines, the moon, the blue moon, the red moon for that matter. You know, celebrate all and enjoy them. And it's also a time that we can trust to even get a deeper dimension of the goodness of God. I want to challenge you to position yourself, to be ready to receive more. Come and say after me, say, I am ready, I am ready to receive more. Receive more. Or come and say, I am ready, I am ready to, receive to receive more. I stand and I prophesy over your life. There is a deluge of blessings coming your way. This month, next month, yes, we thank God, but this month, you are receiving bountiful blessings Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, you continue to bask in them and relish in them and glorify God by them, and so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, however, just as we have shared, today is Father's Day, it's also a special day, okay? It's the day that we celebrate God's fatherhood grace in our lives. You know, and the pilot scripture for today, you know, is what Pastor Bami read, you know, at the opening of the prayer, opening of the service a moment ago. It's in First John chapter 3, verse 1. And the Bible says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not because it knew him not. You know, first off, let me start by saying, don't be surprised if people around you, the world around you, the system or the Eden among whom you're serving as a child of God, if they don't understand you. Okay, if you are being misunderstood, all right, if they're mis misconstruing, you know, every gesture you make, the actions you take, it's okay, it's, it's, it's all right, okay? All right, it's simply because they don't know you, amen, okay? They, you know, but God will continue to unravel you, even among them, and reveal his goodness through you, in Jesus' name. And that scripture is so clear, it says, because they don't know God, so they don't know you. Well, that will be for some other time. All right, but today we are focusing on the first part of the scripture that says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. And then, what manner? It's like the magnitude, the measure, all right, the standard of measurement of his love on, upon us. How great it is, how humongous. This love, God, look, wow, what an alarming measure of love that the Father has given to us. And then what, what, what really happened? And it says, he bestowed upon you and I the authority and the grace to be called sons of God. You know, about two weeks ago, we shared about, you know, 
that you know God is this as many that received him, he gave them power to be called sons of God. So to be the bestowing upon us the blessings, the endowment, the commitment, or in the present language, the credit of being called the Son of God, even though we don't merit it and we've not measured up to it, but he gave us a credit. He just gave it to us. He bestowed it upon us. He credited us with the authority and the power, the nature and everything to be called sons of God. You see, let, I'm not going to go back to the message you preached a couple of Sundays ago. And of course, some part of it that Pastor Pami preached last Sunday as well. So we're not going to recap all of that. But I want you to understand, please go back and review those messages and understand the fact that it's a huge blessing that you yourself as a believer, you can step up and say, you know what? I'm proudly, proudly declare I am a child of God. Amen. You are a true child of God. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord bears witness with our spirit. And he affirms to us that, you know what? We are children of God. Amen. So we're going to focus on this right now. But let me start by saying God's fatherhood to us is all about love. Amen. It's all about love. You know, of course, you know the scripture John 3, 16, he says, he loved the world so much and he gave his only begotten son. He loved us so much. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whoever, whoever will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ will not die, will not perish, all right? Will not be messed up, if you will, but have everlasting life. All right, the bottom line is this. God is love and he cannot deny himself. So everything about Father who is about love because he himself is what? is love. First John chapter 4 verse 16 says, and we have known and believed the love that God has towards us. We have known it. We've experienced it and we believe in it. You know, let me ask you, do you know the love? Now, if you don't, then begin to get to know that love now. The Father's love to you. By the way, the theme of this message is the Father's love. The Father's love. All right? It says we have known, okay, and we believe the love that God has towards us. You know why? God is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. See, after me, say God is love. Oh, come and say like you mean. He said, God is love. So God is love. So he gave himself to us because he himself is love. So everything about fatherhood is love. He loved us so much. He gave. I like verse 8. Verse 8 of that same scripture. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 was so clear, so succinct. He says, he that loves not knows not God. For God is love. Praise the Lord. If you don't love, you don't know God. Because God is love. All right? But if you are struggling with bitterness, with hatred, with anger, with a lot of things, you know, and then you begin to, you know, uh, be mean towards people. You keep malice against, you know. I understand sometimes you get crushed and you lose your composure. You lose your temperament and stuff like that. But if truly the love of God is in you as a man, even as a woman, you know, you, you can recalibrate, okay? Love rules. Love wins. Love wins you over and gets your nature back to where it's supposed to be because you belong to God and God is love. Therefore, you are love. Praise God. That is your nature. All right. The Bible says if you believe that God, if you believe in God and you dwell in him, then love dwells in you and God is in you. So if God is in you, then you are love. Now, because God is love, we go back to that scripture he gave. Why? Love gives. I'm speaking this to men, every man listening there. Let's understand father's love. All right. As he is a father, those you are, those uh, so also you are a father. All right. 
It is the one title God allowed us to partake of him, even as human being, as male that rules in a home, all right? That you are a father after God the Father. Praise the Lord. You see, fatherhood title of God describes him in a manner, as a progenitor. That's his father, the source of all things. So God the Father, God is God. But when God manifests as a father, as the father, it becomes the source of everything. It becomes the progenitor, the beginning of everything. The alpha and the omega of all. Praise the Lord. The first and the last of all. Praise the Lord. And that grace he has given to you, every man listening to me. You are a partaker to become the source, the beginning of a home, of a family, of a generation, however you want to term it. Okay? And there is no way you can effectively do that if you don't understand who you are. And for you to succeed in the fatherhood calling upon your life, you have to get yourself back to the position of loving, not of bitterness or hatred or bickering or malice or so many things that we men sometimes we get ourselves, you know, into. And that's not the will of God for you. The will of God for you is to reflect the one who made you, the one whom you are named after, the God Almighty, and be as a father, be a father as he is, all right? Because God the Father loves, he gave. You see, giving flows from loving. Amen. If you don't love, you can give. If you love, you give. Also, it's difficult to give if you don't love. In other words, because you are passionate about, you are bound to give into. I repeat, any cause, anything, any vocation, any project, any idea, or any ideology, any, you know, whatever that you care about, you are bound to give into it, whether you like it or not. What you care for, you give your time into, all right? You care about it. You give your attention to, okay? You will give your energy, or by, by, by extension, you give money into, Praise the Lord. You see, that John 3, 16 says, He loved us so much. He loved the world so much. He gave, you know, His only begotten Son. In other words, He desires our redemption. He, re he re desires the redemption of the entire world. And He invested into it. He gave His Son into it. See, what you love, you have to give into. Okay? So my question is to, to you as a man, as a father to be, or as a father, or as a grandfather, is this, what are you giving into? Amen. So what are you giving into? Okay. What are you investing into? See those things that seem to matter to you, all right? The one you spend your time on, you spend your energy on, you give your attention to. Some, it's gambling. Some, it's kind of drugs. Some is uh, last, you know, some kind of lasciviousness, all right? Some kind of sinful nature out there, you know, adultery, you know, fornication, you know, some they are so addicted to some crazy things, even though they go to church, even though they claim they are holy and they're godly and everything, but the love of Christ, the love of God is not true in their heart. Praise the Lord. Right, you know what they are by the virtue of what they are giving their time, their talents, their energy, their money, and their resources, their attention, their care into they are not godly. Okay, so the question I'm having is this what are you investing in? Is it godly and goodly? Praise God, or is it deadly and satanic and destructive? All right, you have to choose. All right, love. Whatever you are passionate about, you love, you care about, you are bound to invest into it, whether you like it or not. Whether if you love gambling, yeah, that's what you love, then you are investing into it. And they're going to keep on losing and they're getting addicted to it and all of those. If you love fornication, you're going to be investing in it. 
And then I pray, in any way you are given in the wrong direction, may the Spirit of the Lord deliver you today. We proclaim your liberty and your deliverance, that you may realize who you are, and you indeed be a true father, as God the Father has ordained you. Let's look into the Father's kind of love. You know, number one, God's love is unconditional, but I want you to, uh, you're the agape love, we know that, all right? But the another thing is this, it is selfless. It is selfless. It is selfless. It's always about others. You care, you love, and you are willing to give yourself. You don't consider yourself as being of greater priority than others, all right? You want to be sure people are comfortable, not to the detriment of your wellness. I need to clear, be clear about that. All right. After all, Jesus says that you love others as you love yourself, not that you love others above yourself. Okay. But you care. As a father in a family, you care about your wife, about your children. All right. You don't just do things without considering them first, you know, as to what is right, what is wrong, you know. So that is the selfless kind of love. So father's love is selfless, is considerate, considerate of others, what they're going to feel. You know, you don't want to hurt people. You don't want to, uh, you know, mess people, things up around people. You are considerate in the expression of your love. And that love, father's love is also sacrificial. It's giving, like I said, it's sacrificial. You see, father love is gave. He gave. He could keep the company of his son, but he let go of his son for a period of time. Now, by the measure of time for us human beings, they say for 33 years we can, we can conclude. Praise the Lord, because Jesus was here physically for that you know span of time. And he did that. He did that. Okay? Sacrificially. So, and that's the kind of love Father expects of any father. Of all fathers and I pray that grace will rest upon you amen and the father's love is caring also you see in the book of Matthew chapter 18 verse 12 we saw Jesus in a parable you know was talking was teaching us how to pray actually you know the need for us you know that God really cares about us he said you should think about this he said look we is it not if as a husband man, you know, and one of your sheep got lost, he said, aren't you going to leave the 99 and go after that one? So it takes a caring shepherd that will leave the 99 in the pen and go after that one. And God, the father is like that. No one is too small or insignificant in his sight. He cares so much about you that he will come after you. He said, you are precious in my sight, he said. He said, look, and then you are as the apple of my eyes. So that's how special you are to him, all right? So he's going to keep coming after you until he saves you. That is God, the Father's kind of love. And I'm sharing all of this. You as a father, that you've got to be loving like that. You love selflessly, you love sacrificially, you love caringly, if you will. You really care. Pay attention to every single person, not just in your family, also in your life. Pay attention to individuals. And at the moment you are paying, giving them optimum, optimum attention, let it appear to them that they are the most important person to you at that time. That is living the 99, shift your mind off the 99, bring all your attention to this one right now. Because the 99, they're in the pen, they are doing well. But this one needs every attention. That's the wisdom in that scripture. That you know you must learn to zero in in caring for the one right with you at a moment. For example, as a father in a home, there is a time you've got to be focused on your wife and give your wife optimum attention. Give her the feeling that, you know what? Thank God for our children. Thank God for our family members. But you are the most important person to me right now. 
and she could feel that that right now you are living the 99 and you are giving her the optimum attention i don't know how many children you have but you've got to play the game if you call it game in court because it's a goodly one it's a good game god the father has the ability to do that he can leave the 99 and go after that one you got to do it in the same manner and make sure each one of your children they have their moment oh i can't begin to tell you sometimes i will bulge into my to my son's room blast the door open and i will jump and throw myself boom and land on the bed right by his side i know and you know maybe he was just waking up and stuff like that and it, that moment is like you it's like me and him him and myself alone in our world we cheer we chow talk we crack jokes we do that it may last for just five minutes but it is my living 99 and being with one it is the wisdom of god you can practice it as well and the same thing i do with each one of my daughters i like to have special time with each person let it be the moment of living the 99 and spending time with them the whole attention with that individual not just within your family like i said you know anywhere in your neighborhood when you're with someone give optimum attention give that attention let them know you care let your eyes be on them and let your heart your mind also be with them amen all right that's the father's kind of love you see and then another aspect i want you to understand we can read that in the book of uh, jeremiah chapter 29 verse 29 and verse 11 jeremiah 29 verse 11 the bible says for i know the thought that i think toward you says the lord the thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you the future and a hope to give you a future and a hope father's love is good thoughts he demonstrates his love by his good thoughts towards us and then being a father like god the father let your thoughts be clean towards everybody praise the lord oh come on don't allow your mind to be defiled he says i know the thought that i think towards you is of good and not of evil don't you ever harbor evil thoughts against anyone if you feel offended by anybody then bring it up and get it done with so that your mind can be pure can be clean can be clear about anybody now listen this is not just about your family members about every single person you come in contact with even those that offended you in the past when you see them why because you've forgiven them and you forgotten you've forgotten about that past but right now right here they are special to you and your thought towards them is of good and not of evil not just that to be part of their vision to be part of the fulfillment of their hope and the future that they have amen if you believe i say amen to that amen. oh lord we pray that you grant us wisdom and grace to be the kind of father that you desire of us can somebody say amen to that amen, amen. so he says i know the thought that i think if that is the thinking of god the father towards us and i think that should be the, our own thinking as we relate with one another you see the measure of that is pretty clear you know jesus he told us that look we should okay love one another like that we should reach out to one another like that okay another thing i want you to understand is this jesus god almighty god the father he always good given to us good gifts good gifts mighty beautiful good things not that his thoughts towards us are good not just that that's great and our thoughts should be good towards other he gives us good gifts good gifts you see let's see that in the book of matthew chapter 7 we're going to read from verse 9 jesus here teaching us how to pray the disciples they asked they went after him you know to learn how they could pray and stuff like that let me read this he said ask and it shall be given to you seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you challenging us to pray 
For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeks finds, and to him that knocks it shall be opened. Or what man is there, listen to this, is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? And if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? Verse 11, listen. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good gifts to them that ask him? Please underline that. Underline that. How much more, you know, shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good gifts, good things to them that ask of him? Good gifts come from God. Good and perfect gifts, the Bible says, they come from above, from him. Now, verse 12, that scripture says, Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. That is, look, you expect good things, all right? Then give good things. What you expect to be done to you, do to others. Our Father in heaven, he gives good things gifts also give good gifts you know to give good gifts comes with a lot of thoughts now let me define the word gift because now i don't want you to think i'm challenging you to go keep buying things for people and give this good gift to them if you want to do that that's fine there's nothing wrong with that but good gifts is wishing people well and contributing to their wellness to their improvement in any form, in any way. Sometimes your good gift may be a counsel. Your good gift may be a book you challenge to a tape or something like that. Your good gift is putting a good word on their, you know, on their behalf in some areas where they can experience the goodwill. You connect them well. Good gifts. Good gifts. Good gifts. Our Father in heaven, he does not only think of good for us, but he gives us good gifts. And Father, and the best of all the gifts he, he, he gave is Jesus Christ himself, his only begotten son. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, and I want you to understand that and embrace that. Practice that. All right? Relate with that. Flow with that. Okay? All right? You see, not enough for him to be able to give us good gifts. He knows the things you need even before you ask. He understands who you are, you know. He knows exactly, you know, what your needs are before you begin to ask them. All right? And he commits himself to giving good gifts. Please, I appeal to you as a father that you are in the likeness of God the Father, be sensitive to the needs of the people around you. Now, if for one reason or the other you have no clue what that is, then go ahead, seek the face of God, pray, and the Father in heaven will reveal to you how you can be a blessing to your wife, to your children, to everyone around you, you know, especially in the place where he has planted you to be of a great blessing. Beloved, the word of the Lord to you today is that you should pattern your fatherhood after that of God the Father. It is possible. The Bible says, as he is, so you are in this world. Pattern of the, if there is anything in your life that is contrary or contradicting to whatever God the Father expects of you, then this is the time to fix it. Use this day, the Father's day, to be in good tune. Align yourself with the Father and let your family know. Let your community know. Let everyone around you know that, you know what? You want to continue to live your life in the pattern that is displayed unto you by the great Father in heaven. In other words, love as he loves. Love as he loves. Now, let me read, let's read this final scripture before we round up. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verse 25. This is the Spirit of the Lord giving admonition through Apostle Paul to the church in Ephesus. And he was specifically speaking to men.
fathers in the house. Listen to this. Let me read from verse 22, then we'll jump to that verse 25 when we get there. But that is verse 25 on the screen for you there. It says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Verse 23, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now verse 25, this is where we're going. Husbands, love your wife even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Husbands, fathers, love your wife even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Let's get the picture clear here. You see, Christ's love for the Father is displayed in the way Jesus himself, Christ, loves the church. Now, Jesus has every opportunity to prove that he loves the Father, but the only way he can prove it is what he does for the church. Christ's love for the Father made him sacrifice himself, yield to the instruction of the Father, even to the point of death on the cross. And the Spirit of the Lord is telling us that, you know what? Love your wife. Love your wife. Just as Christ loved the church. If Christ will prove to the Father that he loved the church, I mean, that he loves him, the Father, the way he loves the church, and he did good job to the point of dying sacrificially, selflessly, caringly, and everything for the church. He did that because he loves the Father. He, he committed himself to obey the Father. He committed himself to please the Father, and he demonstrated that through his love, his selfless, sacrificial, caring, and giving passionate love for the church. Now, the cool thing about that is that the church is not perfect. You know the flaws in the church, right? The church is not perfect, but Christ never gave up on the church. It takes great love to never give up on a particular, you know, person or you know, group of people or stuff like that, that they kept spitting in your face. They kept doing things you that is not right and a lot of things like that. But Jesus is committed, not because they were good, not because the church is good, but because Father is good, is faithful. So because of the relationship between him and his father, and he loves the father, then he gave. He gave his life. The father loved the church, loved the world. He gave his son. And the son loved the church. Well, he gave himself. He gave himself. How does this relate with you? Well, as a father, thank God for your wife. But the word wife there is symbolic. Symbolic of not just your wife, it includes your children, your family, and any and every single person, everyone whom the Lord has brought within your sphere of influence. Everyone you have the authority and the privilege and the blessings to be able to reach out to. They constitute the wife. Remember, the church, church, millions have been dead. Members of the church been there a long time ago, and there are millions, if not about 2.2 billion Christians on the planet of Earth today. And then in maybe in 100 or 150 years, all those 2.2 billion will be gone fully, and there will be yet more people still part, still being part of the church. As many as we are in the billions of numbers, guess what? The love of Christ, the passion of Christ for the church is still the same. So husband, love your wife. Yes, literally, love your wife. You know why? Because your demonstration of your love with the wife is a testimony that you really care about your children. Because you want your children to be at peace, not to be at loggerhead, not to grow up to become, you know, nemesis or, you know, a, a kind of thorn in their generation, all right, the tongues in their generation. Then it's important that you exhibit the true love of God 
to their mother because the degree to which you love each other yes you may have some moments of disagreement or, or some issues or so, but they know that there is an underlying foundational something between both of you and it is of pure love real love genuine love and your children they can grow to see that so if you love their mother you are telling them you love them and you care about them and the love between you and their mom will flow eventually to them praise the lord and it's not limited to that it's a reflection or a a, a, a sign that you really love god the bible says if you don't love if you love not first john 4 8 if you love not you do not know god for god is love and the love of god dwells in you all right but if you love not god doesn't dwell in you so if you love sincerely you display you loving the mother in the house loving the children loving everyone that comes your way sincerely and genuinely i mean selflessly sacrificially caringly so caring that you give good gifts at all times so caring that is good thoughts at all times and you are passionate about meeting or contributing or be part of the things that make things better for them then you are demonstrating the true love of the father beloved if there be any father any young man and you are struggling with that you are struggling with that yes pastor my life right now doesn't really reflect that. There are moments, yes, I can say I flow in that love, but I'm not even sure if God the Father loves me and he cares much about me now. You know? You know, and I struggle in the area of loving my wife. Yes, I struggle in the area of loving my children. I find it difficult to leave the 99 to focus on one. I can't even pay attention. I don't even know what the needs in their lives are. Okay, sometimes my thoughts towards people is not of good, it's of evil. Sometimes what I'm thinking, I dare not say it. <laughs> All right, because it's not nice. But I want to be better. I want to be better. I want to be a reflection of the true love of God the Father on earth. I want to be the man God has made me to be. If that is your passion, this word is for you today. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Now, why don't you just close your eyes and bow your head wherever you are. And I need you to say this statement along with me. Say, God, you say, Father God, I thank you for being here right now, for sending your word to me. I have heard your word and it pricked my heart. And I'm willing. I'm ready. I open up my life. Come into my life. Jesus, take your place in my heart. Help me to be the kind of a father that's full of love that you have destined me to be. Help me to love as you love, selflessly, sacrificially, caringly, that my thoughts be pure towards everyone around me, that I be able to contribute to the goodness, your wellness, and your, 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 the future and the hope of individuals around me. Count me in the class of those that give good gifts in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help me to be the father you have destined me to be. In Jesus, my name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me pray for you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you for this beautiful Father's Day. Lord God, you are God and you are love. All right? And Father, if we know not love, then we don't know you, you know. But when we know love, we know you. And we, you dwell in us and we dwell in you. So, Father, that grace I receive, oh God, for every father and father-to-be in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask, oh God, that the grace of fatherhood will rest upon all fathers in the name of Jesus. Enable us, oh God, purify our mind. Let our thoughts be good in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Happy Father's Day to you there. Now, I do know that God has spoken to you. Now, do me a favor. If you know any man or any young man that you believe the wisdom in this message will be a blessing to them, why don't you right now 
share this message right now go ahead and share it share it on facebook on youtube whatever that is on instagram send it to the and send send the message and type on top of it happy father's day happy father's day let the word of the father let the love of the father get across to them and they will be they will thank you for bringing this blessing their ways in jesus name all right now everyone let's just let's have a great time together right now let's bless the name of the lord let's give offering right now let's give you know the bible says now we read the moment of love. he loved the word he gave all right be a giver be a giver all right it's not just your time your talent your attention and all that your energy also your money your funding all right if you're giving give generously okay if you are giving your tithing now let it be faithful tithing not just where i throw something at them let it be that one tenth of that which as god has blessed you with and let the blessing of god come upon the remaining 90 percent and that you increase in leaps and bounds in jesus mighty name amen let me pray for you father god in the name of jesus we want to thank you oh lord at this time we give from the depth of our heart we give generously we give cheerfully we give sacrificially we give because you love us and we love you too lord god as we give we receive blessings upon our gifts upon our lives and upon everything we bring back upon increase on all sides abundant blessings the bible says you know you are able and we receive it that you make all grace abundant to us that we may always have all sufficiency in all things that we may abandon to all good works we receive it to the glory of your name amen and amen praise the lord hallelujah now my friend you know if you want to give it that's cash up information there hashtag overcomers christian c all right if you want to use zell use uh overcomers christian c at gmail.com that's the handle for that but if this message touches you and you want to get in touch with us that is that email contact information the phone number is there the email just shoot us something all right and then we will get back to you as soon as we receive uh, something from you the lord bless you may the lord increase you may the voice of the father be clear unto you may he lead and guide you in all that you do in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen shalom